Hi, my name is Richard Defoe, and this is my first painting tutorial. So today I'm painting uh, Grim Barmaid from uh, LeadAdventure.com company. Uh, I think they're well, they're in Europe anyway. I don't know if, what country they're in. I've ordered from from them a few times. Uh, they're pretty quick, and their figurines are just absolutely beautiful. They do a range of uh, post-apocalyptic. Uh, they do a range of sort of a Renaissance, really really detailed village or townspeople Renaissance, amazing stuff. And uh, they do, uh, well, they do a, a whole series of dwarves, which looks just super great. And there's a whole series of female dwarves uh, that just look, that just, they spoke to me. These 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 uh, lovely ladies have volume to them. They have heft. They, they're really well sculpted. They're fun to paint. Sometimes you get figs that are just no fun to paint. And these are fun to paint. So this is one that I had already painted months before and didn't finish it. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to try out my new camera and see what I can do. So let's try this out. So I should start off by saying that uh, the way I'm filming this, the model looks a lot bigger on the screen, unless you're watching this on a tiny phone or something, the model looks a lot bigger on the screen than it is in real life. These figs are less than an inch, or I guess they're about an inch tall, inch and a half. You know, they're, they're 28 or 30 millimeter, but since they're dwarves, they're a little short. So I think they're about three quarters of an inch tall. So they're they're pretty short, pretty small, and uh, my eyesight's not what it used to be. And yeah, my brushes look pretty gross up close. And you'll notice that I'm kind of smearing the paint on, and I'm not worried too much about you know covering up the the crown that she's got on there and touching things. And it, I, I just noticed, I just realized that there's a big blot of orange paint on the rolling pin, which I just hadn't noticed until this moment. And now that I'm doing my re-recording re of the audio and I'm looking at the model I lifted it up yeah there's a blot of orange paint under the rolling pin so check your work kitties yeah so my brushes are kind of uh, kind of horrible and my and my style is is very much sort of a build it up blot it on and uh, fix it afterwards I mean I'm going to be painting that cr I guess it's sort of a crown or a torque or a headband or whatever I'm going to be painting it again later on so who cares if I get paint on it now not too worried just building up the layers um, uh, now I'm putting on some of the, the and, and I worked sort of in the style of building up lighter and lighter layers. So here I'm I'm putting the lighter flesh on and and uh, and you know trying to get it in the direction that the light would be hitting the model if the model was standing under light. But but usually you just want to sort of work your 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 colors from darker to lighter, and uh, you end up with, uh, with something that looks pretty nice. Now, um, I guess I want to do a shout out to uh, to other YouTubers out there who uh, do painting tutorials, and I guess this is my way of saying thank you, and I'm just sort of uh, giving back to the painting tutorial community. So the first person I think I found on YouTube, I'm not even sure how this happened. It was it was a girl painting, Alexandra, a German German lady. She does uh, I, I think my style. And I and I've been painting miniatures since I was 14, so what, almost, good lord, 14, 24, 34, 44, yeah, so 30 years, over 30 years I've been painting figs, so I've developed my style, and uh, it's sort of an everyman style. It's uh, I, I find it's fairly quick. I don't normally uh, spend this much time. Well, you'll notice that that since I've got the yellow out, I thought ah, I'll touch up the dress, do some highlights on the dress. So I'm mixing yellow and white paint on the dress, and when the types of paint that I use everything. I use Reaper paints, Reaper washes, I use Games Workshop paints. Some of them I've had for over 20 years. They're still good. I use uh, Formula P from Privateer Press. You know, I still have some color drop paints. Uh, color drop paints uh, made in Canada uh, by Global Games. I mean, some of this stuff is awesome. Anyway, I've got craft paints, you name it. Uh, so, getting back to, uh, you, you'll notice I'm sort of an ADHD-ish kind of person as well. So, uh, Alexandra, girl painting. So, I find her style is very approachable. Uh, her minis look great. Uh, but I, in my opinion, it, it's not the kind of style that lends to super polished, you know, the kind of work that you see when you go to these game conventions and you see these minis that don't understand how people could have painted that. It's just insane. Uh, they must have. Uh, they must be blind uh, by the time they're done painting. Anyway, uh, her style is very is good because it's quick. It produces nice minis that you can use for gaming. Like, I I have very few minis that I paint and then I don't game with them. And usually I'll paint a series of minis because I want to use them in my game that I'm running. Uh, so uh, if any of my friends are watching this, yes, you will be encountering a whole bunch of female dwarves in the uh, upcoming adventures. 
Yeah, so uh, girl painting uh, started sort of this uh, obsession of watching YouTube painting tutorials. So the next one that I discovered was Awesome Paint Job, uh, starring Lester Bursley. Now this is a guy, I think his work is a little more polished, a little more uh, commercial, and uh, he, he, he uses a, a lot of airbrush and uh, makes, his own, makes his own washes and so on. In fact, I followed his recipe to make some sepia, ink, uh, sepia wash and some black wash which uh, work really well. Thank you very much. I'm really happy with that stuff. And the great thing about making your own is you end up with these massive quantities and you're not afraid to really go in there and, and, and wash your minis with, with the dark ink or the sepia ink. You're not going to run out and have to spend five bucks every time you do a bunch of minis uh, to buy another little friggin' one ounce bottle of ink and paying for the bottle. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Lester Bursley and uh, some of the figs that he paints are just disturbing, but in an awesome way. And uh, watching his videos led me to find, uh, in my opinion, uh, the insane grandmaster of, uh, of polished paint jobs, and that's um, uh, by painted. I mean, this guy is a virtuoso with the airbrush. I think he cooks his eggs in the morning with an airbrush. It's just incredible, uh, the stuff that he does. And the masking jobs, you know, he'll put little squares of masking tape on his models. It's just crazy. Anyway, so, yeah, so those are the three painting tutorial people that I watch. Uh, I watch everything they put out. So that's uh, Girl Painting, uh, Awesome Paint Job, and Buy Painted. These are all on YouTube, and they're pretty marvelous, and uh, they make great videos. So we can uh, talk about what I'm doing here. So right now I'm, uh, I've decided that she has a nice yellow dress on, and she's a redhead, and so green accents, you know, brings out the green, uh, brings out the, you know, the yellow. And uh, I decided that she's going to have poppies on her dress, just like, you know, uh, World War One, fields of, uh, fields of poppies. So uh, the, I, I think it's a nice color scheme. It's, it's simple, but it's nice. Um, you'll notice that the model falls in and out of focus a lot, too. I'm still experimenting with how to set it up. Uh, I'm filming this with my Canon SL1, which is an entry-level DSLR camera, which uh, happens to be, in my opinion, quite good for doing video. Uh, but it doesn't do autofocus very well, especially not this close. I have a lens on it. Uh, it's the... Uh, oh, here I'm doing an ink wash. A black... Uh, 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 black ink wash uh, on the bottom, and then I'll retouch it afterwards. Uh, green and red are, are particularly good at taking black ink washes without sort of ruining the the paint. You notice it's kind of uh, it's kind of sinking into the yellow, and I'm going to have to retouch it. But the black and the, the green and the red are taking it qu quite well. So yeah, watch watch it go right into that uh, armband thing. See see how it fell out of focus. Anyway, so I've got a lens on it that's the Sigma 17 to 70 millimeter. Uh, really great lens. Uh, if you're using a camera that has a small sensor. Uh, people who are more advanced who have uh, full-frame uh, DSLRs, well, they can afford to buy lenses that cost a hell of a lot more than the, than the Sigma 17 to 70. But one great thing about this lens is that you can shoot, uh, you can shoot stuff that's like an inch away from the lens. It's incredible. So right now my camera's on a tripod, and it's uh, on the left side of me. And it's literally, the glass of the lens is literally like an inch and a half away from the model. So it's, uh, and it's zoomed in all the way. Um, my light source is a torch light. It's a little LED. It's got like 30 or 40 LEDs on the front of it. It's battery powered. It's about 50 watts, the equivalent of a 50 watt bulb. And uh, I use it for wedding photography. It's, a, uh, it's the torch light uh, by, Doug, uh, by Doug Gordon. That's a really great little light and I have it on a gooseneck. And so that's right next to the lens. And so this, that source of light is actually bigger than that model. So it gives you nice soft shadows on her, even though the light is all coming from one direction. Um, my lens is stopped down all the way to f16 at this point. I'm trying to get as much in focus as possible, but when you're that close, your, your, uh, your depth of field is very shallow. And that's why the model keeps falling in and out of focus, because every time I move her, Unless I unless I have somehow managed to keep her exactly at the same distance from the lens, she gets out of focus. I think you'll find that as the video goes on, I get a little better at that. And actually, later on, uh, I, uh, I had to stop filming because I ran out of battery. Uh, the SL1 is a really nice uh, entry-level camera, but it's a very it's the smallest DSLR available right now on the market, and it has a small battery, and the battery runs out. So I had to take a break and change batteries. And while I did that. Actually, I, I took I downloaded the video and took a look at it, and I thought that I needed help with the focus. See here, I'm just putting lighter. I mixed in some yellow paint with the red to make it a little lighter. Oh, here I'm putting uh, this is the, my homemade sepia wash, 
that I'm just sort of putting into the cracks of the face, cracks of the boobs, into the fingers and that sort of thing, just to bring the details out. Anyway, so I uh, I thought the focus, and here I, I mixed some black wash in with the sepia wash, and just a little bit, just a little bit. You, you don't need a lot to just really bring out the details. Yeah, so getting back to the camera. So I, I went to F22. Now F22 is, if you look into the lens and you see there's like a little hole that the light goes through, uh, the smaller, the larger the number of your of your f f stop, the smaller the opening. And so at f22, it's about the size of a pore. It's really small. Now what that does is it doesn't let in a lot of light, but it's a lot more forgiving on focus. So my focus, uh, I'll let you know when it happens, uh, will become deeper, but the shadows become darker uh, because the it needs a lot more light. It needs twice as much light in order to function the same way. Um, when you stop it down to f22 from f f16, you'll notice the bottles in the background will be sharper. So, so what you notice me doing is that I'm I'm um, I keep resetting the model back on this spot on the table that I have marked, uh, so that it'll be in focus. And then I'm looking over I'm the, I'm looking over to the left. At this point, I believe I've gone to f22 because you'll notice that the dark the darkness is darker, and it's. Uh, I kind of like this, this, uh, the, the look of this, so that's fine. So uh, yeah, I'm touching up the flowers here. I made a mistake. I'm trying to. I decided the poppies have black centers, but I kind of blotched it on. So I'm probably going to be fixing it in a second. Oh no, I guess I did it. It's good. Uh, now I'm painting this awesome wooden spoon that she's got. At first I thought it was metal, but no, that's a wooden spoon, man. That's for like serving up the potions or the soup or something. I mean, these these figurines are really well detailed. They've got the the bags of coins. You know, this one's got a pair of scissors on the front. Uh, she's got the nice apron strings, this beautiful wooden spoon. I mean, the wooden rolling pin with a freaking orange paint blot on the bottom of it, which I'll have to fix after I'm done recording this video. Anyway, yeah, so a really nice fig. And uh, so getting back to my style of sort of working up working up the colors. Uh, and then and then I'll get tired of working up the colors and then go back in there and use the, uh, the black ink to... Uh, to uh, separate the tresses. Now, that's a brush, I think, that I've had that brush for over 10 years. There's not much left on it. You'll see the blot, the, the hardened knot of paint that's at the top of it uh, with about four hairs sticking out. So I've got to refill the brush every five seconds. But I find it's good for drawing the tresses. Now, I could have... I could have probably just sort of blotted on the ink wash over the whole hair. But this... the the yellow paint is kind of porous, and the ink would have just sunk into it, and it would have turned all sort of a horrible bletchy color, and I would have had to go back again. It didn't feel like it, so I could have varnished it, I guess, and and done an oil wash, like you see, uh, like you see uh, some of these other painters do. But I don't mind uh, drawing the lines with the. I mean, when I was younger, I used to use straight out of the bottle India ink and draw all my black lines, and and then I would go back over it and repaint the, the paint. So using. Uh, diluted ink that you get in ink washes is almost a, it's almost a pleasure compared to to what I used to do now holding the brush I've always noticed that people holding brushes in these painting tutorials are the brushes seem uh it seems it seems kind of kind of awkward you know the brushes are held at arm's length or they're they look kind of stiff and uh and now I understand why uh, and if you don't want to have your knuckles right in there like I'm doing now you got to hold the brush really far away from the model and that's kind of difficult so right now I'm just going in and I'm and I'm drawing black lines around everything, and uh, and uh, yeah, giving her the old mascara treatment there. It's pretty good. I'm gonna even draw a line around her teeth. See how the model's falling out of focus there. And now I'm holding it and I'm gonna put it back hopefully. So it's a, oh there you go. Every any time the the focus snaps back and forth is because I'm playing with the the manual focus on the lens. So next next tutorial we'll try to get it better. Um, yeah, so so if you've never done an ink wash on a model, uh, you don't know what you're missing. You probably want to go out there and get yourself like a... I think you're, the first ink wash you want to get, well, you want to get black, I guess. Uh, it's really great for, for, uh, for bringing out the detail in armor and weapons and things. Um, well here I'm just using flesh tone and brown mixed together to, uh, to bring out the detail in, the, in the, uh, the drawstring and the apron and the, you know, the leather straps and all that stuff. And you just kind of work the detail up. You work it up, 
you know, and if you make a mistake, well, then you just go back and paint over it. And uh, I always keep a lot of paint on my palette. I mean, even though these uh, these bottles only contain about two ounces of paint, they last a long time. Uh, you don't have to worry about putting too much on your on your palette. If uh, if you want to keep going with your paint, uh, I've seen other I've seen some of these uh, these other painters. Uh, what they do is they'll have a palette with uh, a wet a paper towel that's wet, and you put your paint on that, and it won't dry out. And then when you're done, you just put uh, Saran wrap or uh, put it in a in a in a airtight container, and your paint will still be good the next day. It's good actually if you're mixing paint and you want to have the same color. Here I'm going over the green. I mixed in some yellow and some white with the green, and I'm just doing very very high highlights on it. And um, I'm not too worried that it's going into the cracks a little. Um, I find that the strength of this model isn't in the you know the the super fine detail. I think it's in the it's in the character of the model and in the color scheme. I think uh, she's a nice redhead, uh, the yellow dress. It's very summery. You know the green accents. I decided to go with green accents on the model instead of painting the, mo the, the her her crown or her uh, her headpiece uh, some kind of metal like dwarves typically have gold or silver. Uh, same thing with her hair bobbles and, and the, her wrist things, which seem to be textured like metal. I thought, ah, it's painted green. It's, it fits with the color scheme, and uh, maybe it's uh, verdigris copper. Who knows? That's uh, I'm using uh, mithril silver to touch up the scissors. That's mithril silver that I've had for over, must be over 20 years, Games Workshop. Still good. Every time I use it, I put a drop of water in there to stop it from drying out. So here I'm doing final touches on the hair. I'm just going in with some red to really bring it out. This reminds me of the old uh, Phoenix uh, Phoenix hair color job that uh, John Byrne used to do on the Phoenix in, in the X-Men comics, which was just sort of orange hair with red and yellow blotches on it. And uh, I guess John Byrne didn't do it. He was the he was the uh, the artist, but not the colorist. Anyway, so and of course you know you you paint you paint figurines. Uh, that have red hair, but they don't actually have red hair. It's it's more orange because light light hits it, and it just doesn't look exactly red. So I, while I have the black out, I figured I'll just do the base, you know. And because these dwarves, these female dwarves especially, have these big voluminous dresses, they uh, they cover most of the base. So I'm probably not going to base them with flocking. Oh, here we go doing the eyeballs. This is just brutal for me to watch because. <sighs> Eyeballs is such a trial and error, and this time, this this time I pretty much got it first time, first shot. But you know, she has a bit of yeah, she has a bit of crazy eyes. So to do eyes is pretty easy. You paint, you you do it black, like a black eye socket. Then you do a big blot of white, which is the whites, and then you go in there with a small brush and you just draw a line around it, which is your eyelashes. And then for the eye, you just draw a stripe from top to bottom on one of your eyes. And then uh, usually uh, you, she ends up looking one way or the other, and then you try to match it with the other eye so so that she doesn't have totally crazy eyes. So right now she's looking pretty much straightforward. I think now I'm going to draw a black line around her teeth. Oh, no, I'm doing, her, uh, I'm doing her teeth. Okay, so, yeah, teeth, you just have to do a hint. And here I'm about to ruin it. Ah, uh, God, big blot of white paint on the side of her face. No! Don't worry, you can fix it easily with some flesh tone. In fact, I used a very, very light flesh tone because there's still white on the brush. And I highlighted, accidentally highlighted her forehead and her nose, which looks pretty good. Then I went back in with the uh, with the orange to do her eyebrows, same color as her hair. So that was fortuitous. It worked out okay. I think now I'm looking at it and thinking, this is pretty good. Just going to do some finishing touches on the hair. Now, I pretty much consider this model done. Uh... I'd probably spend another hour on it if I was going to enter it in a contest or something. But, I mean, these are figs that I use in games. And this game, this fig's going to be used in a game next month. And uh, it doesn't need to be painted, you know, with uh, every detail uh, super, super ironed out. So there you go. LedAdventure.com. And this is, uh, I call her Ginger. And she's a pretty cool model. Now on the screen she looks kind of chunky, but wait till you see the picture of the of her and her three friends. They look really good. So I can't wait to to get the next series of female dwarves from Light Adventure. And uh, like and subscribe, please, and I'll make more of these videos. Thanks a lot.